Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Nova Muzaki. I'm Triev. I'm Hannah. And I'm Alan. And we will be uh, explaining our own own subtopics from mathematics, economy, and business. Stay tuned. Bye. Hello, my name is Nova Muzaki, and my serial number is one four zero one two two four two six four. And my topic today will be about how to calculate the determinant in matrix. So first, I'll show you the example to calculate the two times two. So let's say this is A, B, C, and D. Okay, to, so in order to calculate this, you have to multiply a times D and then minus B times C. So it's A times D minus B times C. So that's the formula how to calculate the two times two. And now let's jump in the real numbers. So let's say A is, I mean, A is equal to three and then b is equal to 6, c is equal to 5, and then d is 4. So to calculate this is a times d, so it's basically 3 times 4, and then minus. It's either 5 times 6 or 6 times 5, and it doesn't matter, so I'll do 6 times 5. So three times four is equal to 12, and then six times five is equal to 30. And then you can calculate that. So 12 minus 30 is equal to minus 18. And this is the determinant. I'll show you another example. So let's say a quick one, four, eight, two, and three. And then to calculate this again, we have to multiply four times three minus two times eight. <clears throat> so this will be equal to 12 minus 16 and the determinant will be minus four. So that was two times two by matrix two by two. And then now we will be calculating the three by three. So for three by three, it's gonna be like this. This is A1, A2, A3, and then B1, B2, and so on. Okay, so the first step is we have to find the A1 first. So to find A1, you have to cross out the first row and then the first column. After that, it's going to leave us this four numbers, four variables, which is the B2, B3, C2, and C3. So basically, it's going to be B2, B3, and then C2 and C3. And then minus. And after that, we have to find next what we have to find next is the b1 in order to find that is you have to cross out the first row and then the second column this time so what we have left now is this four numbers which is a2 a3 c2 and c3 so for b1 is a2 a3 c Two and C three. So the next step after minus is plus. So the next one is C one. To get the C one here, you have to cross out again the first row, but this time the third column. So which leaves us these four numbers. Now we gotta put this. 
A two A three B two B three. So this is the formula of how to calculate the determinant for a three by three matrix. And now we'll just jump and straight to the to the exercise. So let's say this is three two three two six minus five. Let's say this is five four seven minus seven one and nine. <clears throat> Okay, to calculate this, in the formula, it says A1 here, A1. So, but in this exercise, A1 is represented as three. Yeah. So to get the three or A1, we have to cross out the first row and, and the first column. So we're left with five, four, one, and nine. So we put here five, four, one, and nine. And then next is minus, beside three is two. And then to get two, we have to cross out the first row and the second column, which leaves us with five, mi minus five, minus seven, five and one. I mean, wait, it's wrong, four and nine. Here. <clears throat> and then for the C3, I mean C1, C1 is equal to 6, right here. This is C, C1, we have to cross out the first row and the third column. And lastly, we'll be left up with this. Minus five, minus seven, five, and one. So that's how you simplify the three times three matrix into a three, two times two matrix. <clears throat> now we have to evaluate this matrix, the two by two. So the first one is the three. It's basically like the two times two. So it's basically five times nine and then four times one, like that. So five times nine and then minus four times one or one times four, doesn't matter. <clears throat> and then minus, don't forget minus, minus two. This is gonna be open brackets minus five times nine and then minus seven times four. And then the third one is plus six, and then minus five times one, then this is minus, minus seven in brackets, and positive five. Then we simplify it again. So three, five times nine is equal to 45, Minus four times one is equal to four minus minus four times one is equal to minus four and then minus two open brackets minus five times nine is equal to minus forty five negative forty five then minus seven times four is equal to minus twenty eight close bracket and we go to the plus six the C the C1, and this will be uh, minus, wait, minus five. Oh yeah, minus five times one is minus five, and then minus, we'll say minus 35 here. Close brackets. Okay, so now we have to calculate the one inside the brackets. Minus or add up the one inside the brackets. So this will be, 45 minus 4 is equal to 41. Then 45 minus 28 is equal to 
70, I mean, minus 73. And then plus 6. This will be minus 5. Minus negative 35, which will be equal to 30. <clears throat> and then now we have to multiply the inside brackets to the outside. So 3 times 41 is equal to 123. Then, yeah, because negative times negative, negative 2 times negative 70, 73 is equal to positive 146 plus positive 6 times 30 is equal to 180. Then we add it all up. So 123 plus 46 is uh, 269 plus 180 is equal to 449. So this is the determinant of the matrix. Uh, that's all from this topic. And uh, thank you. I'll switch to the next person. Hello. So I'm Tria Virginia Tangara, and my student number is 1401224508. So by now, I'm going to explain about partial marginal utility. I'm going to define the definition first. So utility is refers to the satisfaction or benefit that an individual derives from consuming a good or service. While marginal utility refers to the additional utility or satisfaction gained from consuming one additional unit of a good or service. So next is partial marginal utility. It refers to the chain in utility or satisfaction that a consumer derives from consuming an additional unit of a particular good or service, holding the consumption levels of other goods constant. It measures the additional benefit obtained from consuming one more unit of a specific item while keeping other factors unchanged. So how exactly is partial marginal utility calculated? Uh, it can be calculated by dividing the change in total utility resulting from consuming an additional unit of a good by the change in the quantity of that specific good consumed. So it is expressed as follows. The delta TU reverse the change in total utility. And delta Q represent the change in the quantity consumed. <clears throat> so next is consumption balance. It refers to the concept of achieving an optimal allocation of research between different goods or services to maximize overall satisfaction or utility. So how does consumption balance relate to partial marginal utility? And it is closely related to partial marginal utility as it considers the marginal utilities of different goods or services to achieve an optimal allocation of research. By comparing the partial marginal utilities, of various items, consumers can make informed decision about how much of it's good to consume to maximize their overall satisfaction, given their budget and constraint. <clears throat> so last, I'm gonna give you illustrating about partial marginal utility and consumption balance. If there is a consumer who is deciding, de deciding how many cups of milk and how many biscuits to consume, suppose the consumer partial marginal utility is 10 euros for milk, per cup and for biscuit is at euros per donut. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> if the consumer has already consumed three cups of milk, the additional utility derived from the fourth cup of milk, of milk might be 10 euros. However, the consumer posture marginal utility for biscuit is higher, so consuming one more biscuit might yield eight euros. To achieve consumption balance, the consumer should allocate research in a way that the marginal utility per dollar spent is equal for both milk and biscuit. So it is ensuring the maximum overall satisfaction. I'm going to the example. I mean, I'm going to define the, the formula itself. So first we have to find the first derivative and the function itself is you have x and y 
and uh, this is not if the result is higher than zero, the consumer satisfied positively of the products. And if the result is less than zero, the consumer is unsatisfied. And lastly, if it is equal to zero, the consumer satisfied enough. And next is the formula to find the marginal X and Y. MUX is equals to dot U per dot X and marginal utility Y is dot U for per dot Y. And last is the formula to find the balance of consumer satisfaction. So last, I'm going to explain the formula to find the balance of consumer satisfaction. So it is marginal utility X divided marginal utility Y equals to price of X divided price to Y. So we have to simplify this. Marginal utility X for marginal utility Y equals to price X to price Y. Or it can be like this. So let's go to the question. So this is the question. So the question is the utility function x quadrant per, I mean y quadrant, the px is 150 and by 200, and the income is 3000. So we have to find the constraint first. So the constraint itself is 150x plus 200y equals to 3000. So for the first step, we have to find the derivative. This is the derivative of marginal utility x. It's, uh, dot u per dot x to x y quadrant. This is the um, u y dot u per dot y to x quadrant y. And for the next step, uh, we we will find whether the consumer is satisfied unsatisfied or satisfied positively by, by this uh, equation. X is three and Y is seven. So dot U per dot X, we're using the previous function, I mean the previous formula. So two times three, seven quadrat will be 294. And next is for the y, dot u, dot y, two times three quadrat per uh, times seven. So it will be 226. So both of them are more than zero. So the consumer is satisfied positively. And last, uh, we will find whether the consumer satisfaction has reached the optimal or not. So um, u x or p x, the m u x is uh, the result of the previous formula. So it's 294 per p x is the price of this and p y. The x is uh, 150, so 1.96, and the m u y for p y 
126 per 200 it will be 0 0.63. So this is the con conclusion. Uh, there is no equilibrium. Equilibrium in consumption because marginal utility x per px is not equal to marginal utility y per py. 1.96 is not equal to 0, 0.63. And that's it from me for the next material will be presented by Alam. Hello, my name is Alam Gir. Abiyazars Andrianto and my student number is 140-122-4103. And we learn about the leg ring, the leg ring method. What is leg ring method? This is a Calculation of the extreme value of a function that varies constraint in the form of another function. Forming a new, new function, namely the Lagrange function. Lagrange function is uh, is supposed to be optimized by. Z equal F, X, and Y. And in the condition must be met by this. U equals G, X, and Y. Then the Lagrange function is F, X, Y, and lambda. So this is the f x y plus lambda uh, times g x and y. So the extreme value can be found by formulating the first partial derivatives equal to zero. fx, x, y, and lambda equals f lambda plus lambda g times x equals zero. And f y, x, y, and lambda equals f y plus lambda times g y equals zero. To search the extreme value the maximum point is when f x less than zero and f y less than zero. And the minimum point when fx more than zero and fy more than zero. And this is the exercise.
find the extreme point value of the function z equal x and y with the provision of 2x plus y equals a. Describe the types of extreme value. Now the constraint is G X Y. So the X Y equals it is the two X plus Y equals eight and X X plus Y in A equals zero. Because G X Y So the number one we find the F x y lambda so f x and y is x y plus lambda and g x y is uh, 2x plus Y mean eight. So we get X Y plus two X lambda plus Y lambda in eight lambda. And the number two we find condition for f optimum so we find the first derivative eh the second derivative from x do f divided by the x equals y plus minus. So f so x is zero. Zero equals five plus two. We move y to the left. M and y equals two lambda. Y equals to lambda by four. Okay. 
So for the second derivative, derivative of y is the f sorry, by the y x plus lambda. So f the y is zero, and then zero equals x plus lambda. So we move x to the left, and then like this. So we find x is mean lambda. It's two a, and for lambda is mean x. So we can eliminate one b to two b. Mean half y was mean x y equals two x. And then we stop substitute substitute to substitute y equals to x to two x plus y equals x. And then two x plus two x x is two. And y we move two point two times two plus y equals eight. Four plus y. And then we find x2 and y is 4. So we can find the value z. Z values. We put 2 in x1. We put, we put 4. And then we find z is 8. So z. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll give it to the next person. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Hana Zahra Humaira and my student number is 1401224155. Uh, and my topic is optimization to variables without constraint. Okay, so the first step is we have to find the stationary point through first derivative. And how to find it is by the f per do x equal to zero and do f per do y equal to zero uh, and then uh, the result will be two equations equations and to find the points these equations need to be eliminated.
and then the next step is we have to check the max maximum or minimum values by determining uh, the second derivative And how to find the second derivative is by do quadrat f, where do x quadrat, and then do do quadrat f, where do y quadrat, and do quadrat f, where do x do y. And then after that, we have to check through term b. Term B, and how to check the term B is by multiplying do quadrat f per do x quadrat and do quadrat f per do y quadrat minus open the bracket do f per do x do y quadrat, and it should be uh, the result should be. Uh, bigger than zero so if uh, B is less than zero uh, you should stop the work because it needs higher computation and then we went straight to the exercise uh, here we have DC equal to 3 Q a quadrat plus 4 QB quadrat plus QA QB. Uh, so the first step is we, uh, and the question is if this function is maximum or minimum. Uh, the first step is we have to find the first derivative. So just like what I've explained before, do TC per do QA, uh, we can uh, get the result of 6 QA plus 0 plus QB. So 6 QA plus QB. And since do tc per do qa equal to 0, then 6qa plus qb equal to 0, and this is our first equation. And then we find the first derivative of do qb, do tc per do qb. Uh, here we get 8qb plus qa. Uh, and since the alphabetical have to be in order, so QA comes first. QB. Since do TC per do QB equal to 0, then QA plus 8 QB equal to 0. And here is our second uh, equation. And then the next step. We have to eliminate uh, equation 1 and 2. So 6QA plus QB equal to 0. QA plus 8QB equal to 0. Sorry. And then, because uh, uh, I want to eliminate the QA, we multiply it by 6. Right. 
so we get 6 QA plus QV equal to 0 and 6 QA plus 8 times 6 so it's 48 QV equal to 0 and since we want to eliminate the QA it should be minus uh, and then 1 QB minus 48 QB uh, so we get 47 QB equal to 0. So the QB is 0 because 0 uh, divided by minus 47 is 0. And then uh, next step is we substitute uh, substitute QBST to equation 1. So 6 QA plus QB equal to 0, 6 QA plus 0 equal to 0, so QA is 0 because 0 divided to 6, divided by 6 is 0. And then the next step is we substitute the QA and QB to TC, so TC at this point is is 3 times 0 quadrat plus 4 times 0 quadrat plus 0 times 0 so we get the result uh, 0 so uh, we can make the conclusion so the stationary point is QA equal to 0 QB equal to 0 and TC equal to 0. And the next step we have to check the term B uh, whether it's minimum or maximum. Okay, so to find the maximum or minimum we have to find the second derivative. And how to find the second derivative is do quadrat tc per do qa quadrat and then do quadrat tc per do qb quadrat and do quadrat tc per do qa do qb and we get the second derivative from the first derivative so here we can get uh, 6 and for the do q, uh, second derivative of do qb is 8 and for do qa do qb we can get 1 and all of this is bigger than 0 so it's positive and then we check the term d do quadrat c per do q a quadrat uh, times do quadrat tc per do qb quadrat minus open the bracket do quadrat tc per do qa do qb quadrat so here we can get 6 times 8 minus 1 quadrat 6 times 8 is 48 minus 1 quadrat is 1 so uh, we can get 47 and 47 is bigger than 0 so here we can get the conclusion uh, that the TC is minimum at QA equal to 0 and QB equal to 0 and that's it for today's topic Okay, so thank you. That's all for today. Okay, thank you for watching. Thank, thank you for watching. I hope the videos will give you benefits and bye-bye.